But in Mark chapter number 10, I want to begin reading a very familiar uh, account in the Scriptures. Uh, I want to begin reading verse 17. The Bible says, And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There's none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give it to, give it, uh, to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for being a good God. Now bless the reading of the Word of God. Lord, I pray as the message goes forth, it would certainly uh, find a lodging place in our hearts. May we hide the Word of God in our hearts that we might not sin against Thee. And God, may the Word of God accomplish that which You desire for it to accomplish. Uh, God, I pray that, Lord, we'd embrace your truth and we'd receive the word with gladness. Uh, now, Father, help us tonight. Without you, we cannot do anything. Uh, we know that, Father, all things that uh, are done for thy glory come about because of you. Lord, you spark in us a, a desire to do something. And God, you give us the ability. And God, uh, it's all of thee. Because you said, for without you, we can do nothing. So, Father, help us tonight. Bless these thy people. Certainly, Father, if somebody here tonight is lost without Christ, uh, I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. Bless now, Father. We'll bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice a few things from this text. Uh, I want you to notice uh, this man's desire. Look, if you will, again in verse number 17. Uh, we find that this uh, young man who is uh, uh, called in the Scriptures or, or the subtitle in the Scriptures, the rich young ruler, uh, that's what he's referred to as. Notice uh, in verse number 17 uh, that he comes to Jesus. It says, There came one running uh, and kneeled to him and asked him, Good Master, uh, what shall I do that I may inherit uh, eternal life? Uh, this man had the right desire, Brother Donald. He wanted, wanted to know what it would take uh, to get to heaven. Uh, and friend, if you've never asked that question, you need to ask that question. Uh, what uh, do I have to do that I may inherit eternal life? Uh, now let me say some things. Uh, this young man was in the right place. Uh, he was in the right place. He was at the feet of Jesus. Uh, 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 he's uh, before the right person. Uh, 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 he's before the Lord Jesus, uh, and he's in the right position. He kneels before the Lord. He didn't come uh, 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 arrogantly. He didn't come uh, uh, boastingly. Uh, he came and kneeled before the Lord. Uh, can I say, uh, uh, you're in the right place tonight. Uh, you're in the place uh, that God has uh, 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 provided. Uh, it's his house. Uh, you're in the place where the truth of God is being preached and taught. Uh, you're uh, uh, presented with the right person tonight. Uh, 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 we're pointing folks to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he's the only one that can save. Uh, he's the only one that can hear and answer prayer. Uh, as we preach this morning, he's God Almighty, uh, and he can help you tonight. Uh, but you've got to be in the right position. Uh, you've got to humble yourselves and kneel before the Lord to get help. Uh, can I say there's a lot of folks go to church there's not a lot of folks that kneel before the Lord and do the will of God. We see this young man had the right desire. Why are you here tonight? I believe you're here because of the right desire. 
I believe you wanted to come to church tonight. I mean, it's a yucky night. Uh, you'd had many excuses uh, uh, to say, yeah, well, I don't need to go tonight. Uh, I went this morning. Uh, that preacher spit all over me. I just stay home in case he's got the gank. Uh, yeah, uh, but no, you're here tonight because you had a desire to be here. Uh, uh, we, see he had, we see his desire. Notice, if you will, his devotion. Uh, look at verse number 19. Jesus looks at him and says, Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Notice this young man had devotion. He'd been taught the commandments, uh, and notice he observed them. He was devoted uh, to keep himself in line with the commandments. Uh, I don't believe anybody in here tonight's killed anybody. I don't believe anybody in here is uh, 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 lived out in wicked sin this week. Maybe some have, but I don't believe anybody has. I believe you're devoted. I believe folks in here uh, read your Bible every day. I believe there are folks that pray every day. Uh, I believe there are folks that uh, want to live for Jesus. You want to be close to Jesus. You want the will of God for your life. I believe that you're devoted. I really do. This young man was devoted. This young man had a desire. Notice, if you will, his deficiency. Look at verse 21. The Bible says, Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him. Let me stop right here and say, Aren't you glad the Lord don't just chew us out all the time? I listen to some preachers, and all they do is chew people out. Uh, can I say this about sheep? You can't shear them every day. You'll kill them. They only shear the sheep once, maybe twice a year. Jesus, if anybody had a right to chew somebody out, it would have been Jesus. But Jesus didn't come to chew people out. He comes seeking to save that which was lost. And notice what Jesus does. He shows him compassion. He loves him. And aren't you glad he's a loving Savior? Uh, well, notice the Bible says, Jesus beholding him loved him and said unto him, one thing thou lackest. Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Come, take up the cross, and follow me. Notice the Lord says, it's good you keep those commandments. You were devoted. But one thing thou lackest. He was deficient. I wonder what we're lacking tonight. Are you lacking faith? tonight hmm? you know the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God are you lacking faith tonight are you lacking forgiveness in your heart towards somebody tonight I mean the Bible makes it clear if we won't forgive our brother who we have seen why should God forgive us in whom we haven't seen uh, listen God for Christ's sake has forgiven us and he's commanded us to forgive one another do you have forgiveness in your heart or are you holding a grudge? Hmm? Maybe why you're so nasty in your, in your dispositions because you've got a grudge in your heart. You know what's in your heart usually works out your mouth. Hmm? Are you lacking forgiveness? I ain't even preaching. Some of you get a little nervous. Are you lacking focus tonight? There's a whole lot going on in this world, and if you're not careful, you'll start losing focus and start watching what all's going on out there. Amen. And it's okay to understand what's going on out there, but you better keep in focus. You know why I'm not nervous what's going on in the world? I've already seen how it ends. But we've got to stay in focus. We've got to keep on the firing line. We've got to uh, continue to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. We've got a job to do as God's people. God, uh, as we found out Wednesday night, God didn't save us to sit down. Uh, God saved us to serve Him. Uh, and we've got to stay in focus. Uh, or if not, we'll get awful discouraged. Amen. You lacking focus tonight? Mm. Mm, again, it's getting awful quiet. Are you lacking some fire in your soul tonight? If, you, if everybody would come in here on fire tonight, I might not even got to preach. Amen. Where's that fire burn? Oh, I know you got a flicker. But it's hard to get warm with a flicker. 
Uh, are you lacking some fire in your soul tonight? Are you lacking fellowship tonight? Fellowship with the Savior and fellowship with one another? Hmm? I'm just I'm just asking some questions. What are you lacking? Hmm? Uh, uh, notice this man's disappointment. Look at verse 22, 22. And he was sad at that saying and went away grieved for he had great possessions. I have found this in preaching now 30, going on 37 years. I found that people are willing to do what's convenient to do. But people don't like to sacrifice. Can I say that a great move of God will not come without sacrifice? It will cost us something. Amen. And can I say that Jesus paid the cost of our eternal life? But to have His presence and to have His hand in our life, that will cost us something. To have His blessings on us personally and corporately as the Emmanuel Baptist Church, that will cost us something. Hmm? It amazes me how... People think come to church, it gets turned on just like flipping the light switch. No, what really heats this place and what illuminates this place has nothing to do with the light switch. It has to do with people sacrificing and praying and seeking God's face and being willing to be obedient to what God says. If we're not careful. We'll look at what it costs us and we won't be willing to pay the cost. Well, that's kind of quiet. Let me tell a story right here. It's a true story. I hadn't pastored here long. It was one of our first revival meetings. I think I'd been here a year. Let me talk to you. You've been here longer than me. It was one of our first meetings was with Brother Eddie Davis. And in that meeting, we had nine people saved and five families joined the church. Hmm? Uh, Miss Tammy is one of the ones that got saved. She got saved on that Sunday morning after revival meeting. Hmm? Brother Thad got saved in that revival meeting. He was all upset because he realized he's lost. And he said, what will people think? Here, I'm the treasurer of the church. And I told him, I said, well, they'd rather have a treasurer than a lost treasurer. Uh, he got saved. And it was a wonderful meeting. I mean, it was. I mean, the power of God was all over the church. It was we was in the old building. And... Uh, we give Brother Davis a pretty good love offering. Well, afterwards, there was a man in the church who went and got Brother Ray's dad, who was uh, Deacon Brother Sherman. And that Monday morning after revival meeting, they were here waiting for me about 8.30 in the morning. I didn't know they was coming, but they was waiting for me. They wanted to talk to the pastor. Well, that man had put Brother Sherman up to asking some questions. And uh, what it was all about, Brother Donald, that man was upset at how much money we gave Brother Davis. See, you've got to understand, this church, before I came here, they kind of had a little rule. They gave the preacher 50 bucks per service. So, you know, for a week's meeting, you know, six, that's 300 bucks he should have got. Yeah? What a blessing. No? Well, we gave him a whole lot more than 300 bucks. Huh? Well, uh, that fellow was putting these thoughts in Brother Sherman's head. So Brother Sherman comes, and Brother Sherman's a wonderful... If you've never met Brother Ray's daddy, he is a wonderful, wonderful jewel. I mean, he loves God, and he was always a blessing. He was always one who held up my hands. Uh, he was always one that came to church and ready to worship. He loved, loved God and loved the things of God. So we was talking, and, and, and Brother Sherman says, uh, uh, Brother Doug, he said... This fellow's concerned we gave Brother Davis a pretty good love offering. I said, we sure did. I said, let me ask you this. Did we have a good meeting? He said, oh, yeah. I said, what wonderful seeing them people saved. Oh, yeah. Didn't God grow the church? Oh, yeah. I said, what price do you put on that? He said, thank you, Brother Doug. That's good for me. He said, is that good for you? He looked at that other fellow. The other fellow's going, blah, 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 blah. What price do you put on the things of God? Mm -mm. If we're ever going to get God's attention, we won't get God's attention tipping God. We'll get 
God's attention when we're willing to sacrifice uh, that he be glorified. Now, I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about everything in our life. Listen, it's okay. It's okay if you just read one verse a day. If you study that verse and you get something out of that verse, I'd rather you read one verse and get something out of it than read ten chapters and not remember what you read. Uh, but listen, some of you just skim through the Bible and say you read the Bible. Did you get anything out of the Bible? Uh, did you take time to sacrifice and see what that was speaking to your heart? There's a difference. Uh, a lot of people don't want to sacrifice to have the presence and power of God. Uh, listen, he's disappointed. I'm interested in verse number 21, what the Lord told him. The Lord told him, go and sell what he had. And listen, I understand it. You work a lifetime to get what you get, and it's really not much. Well, you all know I used to work at the funeral home. You know what I found? Mom and daddy's body's not even cold, and everybody's fighting over all their stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but he tells this young man, go sell what you have and give it to the poor. Take up the cross and follow me. Well, the young man was really concerned about that selling all he had stuff because he had great possessions. But notice what Jesus tells him. He says, come, take up the cross, and follow me. With God's help, I want to preach on that thought tonight. I want to preach on take up the cross. Now, when we read that, we see take up the cross and follow me. Our mind immediately goes to what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. And none of us want to sign up to be crucified. Anybody want that? You're a masochist if you do. But that's not what Jesus is telling this young man. He's not telling him, come and take my cross and follow me. He says, take up the cross and follow me. There's a difference. Uh, can I say Jesus could only bear the cross that Jesus had to bear? Uh, can I say that Jesus bore the cross of sin? Uh, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, uh, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, uh, that we might be made the righteousness of God of him. Uh, Jesus took up the cross of shame. Uh, the Bible says in Mark 15.29, uh, And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads, and saying, Oh, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself, come down from the cross. Uh, likewise also the chief priests mocking among themselves uh, with the scribes, saying, He saved others. Uh, himself he cannot save. Uh, what I'm saying, uh, he uh, uh, bore a cross of sin. He took our sin uh, upon himself, uh, and he bore that cross. Uh, you and I could not avoid because if we'd have died in our sin, we'd have died and went to hell. Uh, but he took our sin uh, that we might uh, be robed in the righteousness of Christ. Uh, he became the propitiation or the payment for our sin. Uh, and he took up a cross of shame. Uh, they mocked him and derided him uh, uh, in ways that you and I cannot understand. Uh, he was holy. Uh, he's righteous. Uh, and they are blaspheming him while he's hanging there. Uh, he took up a cross of sin, a cross of shame, a cross of sacrifice. Uh, he took off his royal diadem and became sin. Every filthy, vile sin that you and I can think of, he became so he could atone for that sin. Can I say what a sacrifice? And all he asks us to do is take up the cross and follow him. Can I say he took a cross of sorrow? Isaiah 53 tells us uh, 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 he's despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Uh, can I say, uh, Brother Brian testified to it, Brother Clint testified to it, uh, hey, being saved by the grace of God is not sorrowful. Uh, it's joyful. Uh, he changed my life. Uh, I do not have sorrow for being saved. I have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Huh? Can I say he took a cross of scars and suffering. Isaiah 53, 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. 
and with his stripes we are healed. His cross we couldn't bear. But he says, take up the cross and follow me. So what is the cross that we're to bear? Can I say tonight that we're to bear the cross of the light of the gospel? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 3, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, uh, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, uh, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, uh, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Uh, where to bear the cross of the light of the gospel? Uh, where to let folks know far and wide uh, uh, the good news, the glad tidings uh, that Jesus died for their sin? Uh, there is hope. Uh, they can be saved. Uh, they can uh, live a new life, uh, be a new creature in Christ Jesus. Uh, they can have uh, the eternal hope of glory for their home. Uh, uh, God will break the chains of their sin. Uh, you say, preacher, why do we go to the jails? To share the light of the gospel. Preacher, why do we do uh, uh, the homeless ministry to share the light of the gospel? Preacher, why do we support so many missionaries uh, to share the light of the gospel? Preacher, uh, why are we involved in the Caribbean to share the light of the gospel? Uh, that is the cross we're to take up and bear uh, and follow the Lord. Let folks know Jesus loves them uh, and he'll save them. We're to take up the cross of the light of the gospel. We're to take up the cross of a load of another. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 2, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. Can I say in cross-bearing, we're to bear the load of another. Isn't it a blessing to be a part of a good Bible-believing church? Can I say, isn't it a blessing to know we have a church family? that if you've got a burden, they'll help bear it. I've seen it for 25 years. Folks around here care about their fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. They'll pray for them. They'll be there for them. They'll help them. You talk to Brother Adrian. He could not believe all the folks that showed up to help when they moved uh, and the kindness people showed. Can I say what we have is not normal, so you're not normal. I'm okay being an abnormal Baptist. Uh, but isn't that what the Bible teaches? And if somebody's overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, uh, uh, we're to restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, lest ourselves also be tempted. Aren't we to care about people and try to help people and try and be good to people? That's cross-bearing. It's not always being good. It's not always easy to be good to people. It's not always convenient to bear somebody's burden, but it's always right. You think it was convenient for Jesus to leave glory to come and pay for our sin? See, in following him, we're to follow his example and see how he treated people. And us, we're to take up the cross of a load of another. I thought about this. We're to bear the cross of the love for the brethren. The Bible says in John 13, 34, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another. And you know what will be the most natural thing in the house of God? Love. Shouldn't be envy, shouldn't be jealousy, shouldn't be pride, shouldn't be error, should be love. Now, I'm glad we got a church where folks love one another. Now, like every family, there's some we tolerate. Every family's got a cousin Eddie. That's all right. He's our cousin Eddie. Huh? But love one another. You know what is not apparent in a lot of churches I go into? Love. I go into churches where people sitting on this side won't cross the aisle to shake the hand of somebody sitting on that side. I go to churches where the folks won't, they, they die before they come up and shake your hand. Uh, how many preachers have come through here and talked about, I can't believe how friendly and how warm this place is? Uh, God help us, isn't that what we're supposed to be? We're supposed to show love one for another.
listen, on our best day, there's none of us worth the powder it'd take to blow away. Uh, look around. We're the off scour of the world. But Jesus loved us, and he saved us, and he changed our life. And he says, I got, I got a new commandment for you. You just love other people. Because I loved you. You didn't deserve it. Love them even if they don't deserve it. Hmm? Uh, listen, the Bible says in Ephesians 4, 2, with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering forbearing one another in love sometimes you just got to forbear one another that means you just put up with somebody in spite of them can I say you may not know this but some people might have a bad week you ever had a bad week you ever have anything that everything you touched it just fell apart there's some people that have bad weeks and they come to the house of God and all they got on their mind is I've had a bad week. And they don't feel too lovey-dovey. We're to love them anyway. Because I promise you, you live long enough, you're going to have a bad week. Amen. Hmm? Uh, can, I, can I let you in on a secret? There are some days I don't even like myself. I look at that guy in the mirror and I'm not too impressed. Hmm? Anybody's subject to have a bad week or a bad day or a bad situation might even get a little cross, might even say things they don't even mean. You ever done that? Sure. You ever pop off in the mouth and say something didn't even really mean it? But it causes division. Well, we're to love people even if they're out of character because you know what? We've been around them long enough. We know that's not how they normally act. So we're to forbear them with all lowliness and all long-suffering because it just might be us next week who need somebody to love us. Hmm? Uh, see, that's a cross to bear. It's not easy to love somebody when they've just been nasty. But how many times does God, with arms wide open, ready to receive us when we've been nasty? Hmm? Uh, that's a cross we're to bear. I thought about another cross we're to bear. We're to cross the bear of living in the Spirit. It's wonderful being saved, but it's not always easy acting like we're saved. It's not always easy living like we're saved because we're still robed in this body of flesh. None of us have arrived yet, and this flesh has a pull to it, and it wants to pull us back to that old Adamic nature. It wants to pull us back to that life of sin and the pleasures of sin for a season. And that new man, that man on the inside, he's wanting to pull us towards Christ. Uh, and there's a constant battle going on. Uh, and friend, if you're not careful, you'll feed the flesh more than you will the inner man, and you'll be walking after the flesh. Uh, it's a cross to bear to live in the Spirit. The Bible says in Galatians 5, 6, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Romans 8, 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us uh, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. It is a constant thing we need to be aware of that we need to walk after Christ and walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit. That's a cross to bear. Hmm? Can I say, it just doesn't poof, happen, fall on you and you just live in the Spirit. It takes time spending on your knees, talking with God. It takes time being in the Word of God. It takes time learning to exercise those spiritual ears to learn to discern the Spirit of God and when He's speaking to you. Listen, you can be saved 50 years and it doesn't make it something that just happens and it's easy. It takes work. It's a cross to bear to live in the Spirit. Can I say this? We have crosses to bear. The Lord said, take up the cross and follow me. One of the crosses that we're to bear is to leave the past behind. I don't know about you. Anybody ever struggle with something you done wrong yesterday? Do you ever get down to pray and the devil whispers things in your ears about what you used to be? Hmm? Uh, devil ever tell you you wasn't even saved because of what you used to do? Let me help you something. Go read John chapter number 8. The devil's a liar and the father of it. Uh, uh, that's not 
conviction. That's the sorry no good devil trying to get you to live back in your past. Huh? It's a cross to bear to leave that in the past. That's something you've got to sacrifice and crucify every day. Your past. The Bible said, Paul said in Philippians 3, 13, Brethren, I count my, not myself to have apprehended. Paul said, I haven't arrived. We're talking about the Apostle Paul, who wrote you know, half of the New Testament almost. I mean, we're talking about one of the greatest men outside the Lord Jesus Christ and John the Baptist had to be the Apostle Paul. And Paul said, I haven't arrived. He said, I still suffer with things. Matter of fact, in Romans chapter number 7, he talked about, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Paul struggled with things just like you and I struggle with things. But Paul said this. He said, I've not counted myself to apprehend it, but this one thing I do. He said, I haven't arrived, but I have found out one thing that I'm, I've got to do. This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind uh, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Do you understand the Apostle Paul under the law was guilty of murder for having Christians murdered? Do you realize that he tortured believers? Can you imagine once he became a believer how much that haunted him? Can you imagine how much the devil used to throw that up in his face? Hmm. Paul said, I, I've learned this. I've got to forget those things which are behind, and I reach forth those things that are hid. He said, I'm looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. He said, I'm, I'm reaching forth to those things on the glory side because I can't dwell in the past. Listen, the devil, he's a liar. He'll tell you all kinds of things. He'll tell you you didn't pray the right prayer when you got saved. How does he know he's not saved? Uh. He'll tell you you don't read the Bible enough to be saved. He'll tell you you're not, you're not this and you're not this and you're not that. Let me have something. Next time the devil, I don't advocate you talking to the devil. That's a bad thing. I mean, uh, uh, Michael the archangel didn't even nurse accusation against him. Uh, 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 he said, uh, the, Lord, uh, uh, the Lord will take care of you. You just give it to the Lord. But sometimes when that devil just gets on your back and he gets on your final nerves uh, and he keeps telling you what you're not, what you're not, what you're not, what you're not, just look at him and say, you know what you're not? You're not going to heaven when you die. Huh? Huh? He's going to the lake of fire. Sometimes you just need to remind him who he is and then plead the blood of the Lord Jesus and he'll leave you alone for a while. Now listen, if he tempted the Lord himself and the Bible said he left him for a season, that means he constantly came back and tried to tempt the Lord. If he tempted the Lord, don't you think he won't, he'll tempt us? He's not afraid of us. But sometimes it's all right to just plead the blood of the Lord and go on. Forget those things which are behind. There's no good back there. The only thing in your past you need to remember is you need to remember the place where Jesus found you. And then let the rest of it go. huh? Uh, that's a cross to bear. You might do real good today bearing that cross, but tomorrow that booger will show back up. I want to remind you. Uh, we just need to get spiritual Alzheimer's. We just need to forget some things. Hmm? Uh, and that's a cross to bear. I'm talking about crosses that we're to bear. Can I say this lastly? We need to bear the cross of affording the next generation a legacy. Some Christians really, I want to call them, they have dartboard Christianity. They just throw things at the wind and hope everything works out. Do you know that the Lord does everything decent and in order? Can I say that the doctrine of the perpetuity of the church, this church just didn't happen. The Lord had 
one generation hand the gospel down to another generation and the gospel to another and there are people that put their lives on the line and they earnestly contended for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints uh, we have a church because people uh, throughout generations kept doing what God commanded the church to do it is our responsibility to leave these young people at church when we go off the scene it's our responsibility to make certain they are afforded the same privileges we're afforded today, to be able to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. The Bible said in Joshua 4, 6, that this may be a sign among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, what mean ye by these stones? God told them to set up some landmarks. And God said, walk your children around them every now and then. When they begin to ask, what do these stones mean? What's this all about? You explain to them how God delivered you out of Egypt, uh, how God sustained you in the wilderness, uh, how God allowed you to cross over Jordan into Canaan land. You explain how God blessed in spite of your forefathers uh, and how God uh, uh, established you as a people uh, and God did great things for you. Uh, where to teach these young people about God? Uh, where to train them uh, in the ways of God, uh, where to hand off uh, the very truths and very doctrines that we've learned and stood for all these years uh, so that when we're off the scene, uh, they can go back and say, I remember that old-time religion, uh, that old-time worship, uh, that old fundamental preaching, uh, and we still have it today. Uh, thank God for them uh, uh, that paved the way uh, and paid the price uh, and sacrificed uh, that we still have a place to worship God. That's a cross to bear. To leave them a legacy. Because the tendency of today is let's change. Keep up with the times. Well, I'm looking at the times. I'm not too impressed. I'll just stick with the old stuff. It still works. Uh, but yet, there's a lot of pressure. And if we don't put enough in these young people, then when it's time to hand it off to them, they'll crumble and run off to, after all the mess this world has, just like many churches are doing today. We've got to let them see something that's real. Why do you think we spend the money we spend to take them to camps and let them see other young people on fire for God so they can see that this still works and they're not the only ones embracing it? Hmm. Listen, there's not a price too high to pay to invest in these young people. And that's a cross to bear. We're to hand down the Word of God. They're to know why the King James Bible is the Word of God. Hmm? We're to hand down the work of God. Uh, we're to hand the church to them so they can hand it to another generation. We know the Lord keeps the church, we know it's the Lord's church. But we have responsibility to make certain they know what the church stands for. And I'm talking about the local, visible, New Testament, baptized body of believers. Uh, we need to explain to them what the local church is all, hand that off, and where to hand down to them worship. When I came to Emmanuel, this is my 25th year. That's hard to believe, Brother Clint. We're getting old. Now, he'll tell you. When I came here, they had not had a preacher who raised his voice. They all had teaching type preachers. I'm not against teaching. I like teaching type preachers. I'm just wired like one of them guys that, boom, you get it, you know. Uh, that's just the way I am. That's the way I'm wired. But listen, and I've tried to teach you that it's not in the messenger, it's in the message. God uses all different types of men and all different kinds of abilities and all kinds. But I'm the first preacher they ever had that ever raised his voice. And most people did not know about the kind of worship we're doing now and the kind of worship that I was raised on and kind of worship that I kind of get involved in when I go to all them meetings down south. They didn't know what worship was. Now I could stand up and say, you got to worship. Well, if you've never seen it, how are you going to worship? Huh? So we'd load up people and take them to camp meetings. I know one time Bobby Caters, I think we took about 25, 28 people down there, Brother Bobby's, and went down there. And, and you know what I did? I let them experience it. And it's kind of like chocolate. Once you get a taste, you can never get enough. 
Now there's still some that hadn't got a taste. I hope you get a hold of it. Because once you ever do, nothing else will satisfy. That don't mean you're going to act like me. But you will learn to worship God in spirit and in truth. You know, there, there were people up in this area that had the mindset, we've got to reverence God, and we reverence God by being stoic. No, you got too much starch in your shorts, buddy. Uh, that ain't worship. That's prideful. Uh, sometimes worship's getting on your face for God and just pouring your heart out to God. Sometimes worship's throwing up a hand. Sometimes worship's tears run down. Sometimes worship's just a big smile on you. It's something that breaks out on you. Right. And only God can do that. We've got to hand that down to Him. Jesus said, take up the cross and follow me. A lot of people don't like cross-bearing. Because if you take up the cross, that means something has to die. When I came, became pastor in the old building, there was no altar in the church. They'd never had an altar. I remember when one pastor was here, if somebody came forward, they'd tell him something in his ear, and he'd tell them something in their ear, and they'd go sit down. There wasn't no altar. You know why an altar needs to be in a church? An altar's a place where something dies. Now, the beauty of the altar is when you, when you let something die in the altar, you don't pick it back up. You leave it there. Well, bearing a cross is something that you have to die. The Apostle Paul said he died daily. There are some things we need to die out to. We need to die out to self. We need to die out to sin. We need to die out to that sorry, no good snake, the devil. Huh? There's some things you just need to die. And we like us. And we like things the way we like it. But see, bearing a cross, you're going to have to crucify yourself. And you're going to have to die. And you're going to have to keep things dead. Because if you're not careful, it'll well up. That's why I don't let you thank me for the message at the back door. I know me. I know the ego I have. I start taking credit for messages, God will quit giving them to me. He's the one that gives the message, not me. Uh, he's the one that gave me the mind that he gave me. He's the one that gave me the abilities he gave me. He's the one that gives me the message. He's the one that gives me the strength to preach the message. Uh, I just get to go along for the ride. But if you're not careful, you start cre taking credit for the things of God. Self starts with... You've got to crucify that, that sorry, no good person. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You've got to take up your cross. You've got to die daily. I wonder tonight, are you willing to take up the cross and follow Jesus? Now, Brother Ed, when he came and he talked to me, He spurned something in my mind, so I had him make some things. So what would you have him make? I had him make some crosses. Now these crosses are beautiful. They're all different shapes and sizes. Because you know what? We're all different shapes and sizes. We all have different burdens. We all have different uh, abilities. We all have different things. And I wonder tonight, just as a symbol... There's nothing spiritual. These are just old scrap pieces of wood. But are you willing to come and tell the Lord, by your grace, I'll take up the cross you lay in my life and follow you? And as a reminder of that commitment you're making to the Lord tonight, are you willing to pick up one of these crosses and keep it wherever you keep things? Maybe in your Bible, your Bible cover. Maybe on your shelf. Maybe somewhere you can see it. Just to remind you, you need to bear your cross today. You need to bear the Lord today. You need to share the light of the gospel. You need to love somebody today. You need to pick up somebody's load today. 
you need to do something about the legacy of the next generation. I don't know. And I don't know if we, you know, if God even spoke to your heart tonight, but if He did, are you willing to start this new year bearing a cross for the Lord Jesus Christ that you and your life will impact somebody else's life? You know, if we all just won one person, the church would double in size. I know it's the Lord does the saving, but it might be you, your cross bearing that plants the seed. I wonder tonight, are you willing to forsake that thing that God's put on your heart and take up the cross and follow Him? Because hmm? when it's all said and done, 100 years from now, the only thing that's going to matter is what we did for Jesus. Tonight, are you willing to take up a cross? Are you willing to say, Lord, I want you to be Lord. I don't want to be a Christian of convenience. I'm willing to sacrifice and do what you bid me to do. I'll bear my cross for your glory and I'll follow you you willing to do that tonight let's all stand I tell you what I don't even want any music tonight God's give the message if we run out of crosses I'll get brother Ed to make some more Folks are coming. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Lord, that young man went away grieved because he didn't obey. God, help us not to go away grieved and help us not to grieve you. But Lord, help us to go away. Lord, having the peace of God in our soul that we minded the Lord. And God, help us to bear our cross, that others will come to know you, that those that may know you that are in a bad place can get back in a good place, that, God, we could truly be Christ-like because that's what it's all about. God, bless now this moment of invitation, folks doing business with God. Speak to hearts. Help folks to be obedient. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.